We are very happy to have a guest speaker, Catherine Whalen. Um, she is at the Richardson Sloan Special Collections um, at Davenport Public Library. She is the supervisor. She manages the rich collection of genealogical and local history materials at the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Center. She's received her master's degree in of library science from Indiana University. So we are delighted to have Catherine here and away she will go. Thank you. Well, I can't express how excited I am to be presenting for the Allen County um, Public Library Genealogical Center in the Midwest, they are known as one of the go-to meccas for genealogy, so it's a big thrill. Um, I'm so thankful for them for inviting me to share about our resources and collections at the Richardson Sloan Special Collection Center. Uh, my name is Catherine Whalen. I am the Special Collections Supervisor here at the Davenport Public Library for the last five years. In this presentation, we will be exploring the genealogical resources available to family historians in our special collections, as well as an overview of resources available in the greater Quad Cities region. And so with that, I'll cover a few other local institutions that you might want to visit or check out online. Um, I will also delve into the specialties of special collections, as well as how researchers can access materials available in person and online. I'll also provide a brief overview of some of the services that we offer. So we'll get started. So some topics that we'll cover, um, we'll cover the, a brief history and mission for special collections. Um, we'll cover genealogical resources, local history resources, services and tools, and then some overarching resources available at the Davenport Public Library, and then also our Quad City resources. So jumping into our history and mission, um, special Collections was actually first located on the first floor in a special collections room in 1982. It specialized in art, history, music, um, spe and specifically focused, it focused on Bix Weiderbeck, a local jazz musician from this area from the 1920s, and then some also some other local history books. So it was a small room, but it was tasteful. Um, we have a couple pictures of it that we like to post on like Throwback Thursdays. Um, but in 1986, Special Collections outgrew this room and we moved down into the basement with government documents, our government documents collection and our magazine storage. And then just almost a decade later, in 1999, we had a major renovation funded by Alice Richardson and Lauren Ted Sloan. The Sloans, um, they were a great force in the genealogical wor world in Davenport. They held certificates for genealogy and advanced genealogy courses from Scott Community College in Davenport. And they also actively they were also actively actively engaged in genealogical research, research and historical pursuits over the last 25 years. They both have since passed, but um, in addition to funding our renovation of our space, they also donated their genealogical resources from being professional genealogists to our library. So we have that in our collection. And we actually celebrated our 20th anniversary of being the Richardson Sloan Special Collection Center on November 26th in 2019, right before the pandemic. <laughs> so I'm glad that we didn't have to pause on that. We are lucky and we have five staff members in special collections, including myself. Our staff includes Katie Reinhardt, our special collections librarian, Karen O'Connor, our Special Collections Library Assistant, Christina Amador Perez, our Special Collections Clerk, and then Amy Driscoll, our part-time city archivist. Our mission really includes um, in acquiring, preserving, and providing access to local history materials and genealogical collections. In addition, we do serve as um, stewards as the of the City of Davenport Archives, so we help manage the retentions of those records for the city. Our materials represent the Quad City community, the Upper Mississippi Valley region, 
and southeast some southeastern Iowa counties. We primarily focus on Davenport and Scott County. One can read more about our collection development policy by going to the library's website, and it's also included in the handout for this presentation. In conjunction with our mission, we really try to promote literacy and learning, and this includes primary source literacy and archival literacy, so folks that aren't in, are new to those fields and to research to kind of help them understand those aspects of that. Thus, this encourage, we try to encourage the study of local, study and use of local um, history materials at all education levels, including our genealogical resources. Um, we've had some really fun times doing that in the past. We also engage our community by offering educational and enriching programs that meets the needs and interests of our population. We also um, try and perform outreach and provide services outside of our libraries, such as this. So speaking to you guys is a really great way that we can share what we have to offer. And all these activities and projects and programming held by the library should work to accomplish these, these missions. So we'll go on to our genealogical resources. Um, our genealogical collections emphasize research in Scott County, Iowa, as well as other counties and surrounding Illinois counties. We also have resources on the New England states, um, as well as states along migration routes that were used by those who settled in the Scott County area. So we have lots of different states um, represented in our collection. So even if you don't have Scott County folks, um, you can still stop by and check us out. And we'll jump into our resources. So before we begin an overview of the types of genealogical collections we house, I would like to share that we offer a beginning genealogy packet for first time visitors and even second or third time visitors interested in learning about family history research, our collections and other resources. In these packets, we include a five generation ancestor chart, a family group sheet and city directory sheets that we've created to help start documenting your family history. We also have created a resource checklist for users that they can use when utilizing our research collection. The packet also contains other resources such as guides um, to understanding the US census records, um, maps, relationship charts, and more. Um, so they kind of depend on each time we print, on, print, on, print them and then also the purposes why we're printing, why we're printing them. But um, a really fun part about this is that the forms are available on our blog, primary selections from special collections for anyone to download. So if you run out of a, family group sheet or a five generational chart, you can go there and print off some more. Then we have some books and periodicals in our collection that pertain to specifically to genealogy. Um, we have materials on family research techniques, guides and histories. We have books on various ethnic, ethnic groups and uh, regional resources. The genealogy collection emphasizes Scott County, Iowa resources, as well as other Iowa counties. Like I said before, um, we do have like the Mayflower books, um, Germans to America, things like that. And within this collection, we also house about a 2000 book collection of the Scott County, Iowa Genealogical Society. So their collection, their library is housed with ours. So people can come down and look at both of those collections at once. And then along with the Richardson Sloan Genealogical Library, these collections help support our mission and expand the scope of our collection. So we couldn't do it without them. Um, we wouldn't be the center, we would be. Um, we also hold a nearly complete set of publications from the Iowa Genealogical Society and at least one county history for each of Iowa's 99 counties. Our, all of our books and periodicals can be searched for in our library's catalog. So we also have some individual genealogical resources such as individual memoirs, family narratives and genealogies. We also have 
a collection of vertical files that we've collected on various local families. So um, if you can't find anything in our catalog, you can always stop at the desk where we know lots of places to search um, that aren't available online. So you can always come up and we can have that conversation and try and find your ancestors in our collection. Um, so we, I have a couple examples of those things up here. And then we'll jump into how to search our catalog. So the search suggestions that I'm going to offer you guys today are using our classic catalog, which you can access through a tab on our new catalog. So we just recently had a implemented an overlay to our catalog. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to search our old one, just because it offers a little bit different tools for us. But individuals can use both to search for materials in special collections. And so when you go to the classic catalog, you'll want to go to search and then keyword search. And a page will come up and it will have a little uh, text box. You'll type in your term there, but you'll want to go to an option that is below and it's going to say search options. And you'll want to click that and you'll click, you'll select your library and your collection that you want to search. So you'll want to narrow it down to the Davenport main library because that's where we're located. And then you'll choose the collection, which is special collections. And then you can set your search options and you've narrowed down your search to us. And so then you can search away. Then we'll jump into our vital records. So we have a really great collection of vital records from Scott County. Um, we had a really great relationship um, with the Scott County Courthouse and our friends with SCIGS, the Scott County Iowa Genealogical Society. They did a lot of prep work to get these um, records microfilmed in the past. And so now we have access to them. And the courthouse actually sends folks to us to get access to these records. So it's a really great relationship for us. And so the Scott County, the Special Collection Center has many Scott County records. But first I'll touch on the birth, marriage, and death records in our collection. So birth records are they start around 1880 and they go until around 1940 and beyond, um, but they have our returns, registers, and return uh, returns. And so some of those include our delayed birth records. Then next are marriage records. We have application certification certificates, records, and registers. And those start around 1836 to the mid 1900, so like 1941 and beyond. And so we have access to those. And then we also have our death records. Those start around 1880 as well, same as the birth records, and those go until 14, 1941. And those include certificates and records. And so most of our county records are either arranged alphabetically or have a running index. They have um, book indexes as well as indexes on the microfilm themselves. So you can kind of search a, a variety of places to access these materials. But please note that the birth and death registrations begin in 1880, but a general compliance did not occur until later. So you might not find your folks listed in there it doesn't mean that they weren't born or that they didn't die. They just might not have been recorded. Um, and then between 1904 and 1906, and then 1920 to 1941, birth and death records were not always required to be recorded with the county. So that's another mystery, but we have other resources to try and help you figure out where, where they were in Scott County. Then... We'll go on to some other Scott County records that we have in our collection. We have divorce records that span 1854 to 1973. These, um, some of these records, we are actually actively indexing them right now. And so we're, we're starting to enter them into a database, but we have 
booklets of handwritten notes for indexing. So we have a dedicated volunteer doing all this great work for us. And then we have some probates, probate records, which include administrators bonds, ex, uh, executor bonds, guardian bonds, probate appearance dockets, registers of heirs and estates, wills and records, and much more. And those span from 1838 to 1994. And then we have some naturalization records that span 1848 to 1929. Those include declaration of intention, naturaliz naturalization documents, records, petitions. These are really great resources, but they don't really become too informative until after 1906. That's when the establishment of the Bureau of Immigration and Naturalization happened. And so they became a little bit more systematized and formulaic so that they could give us more information. And then we also have some land records. So if your ancestor owned property in Scott County, we can help you trace that. Um, those records date from 1838 to 1918. Those include auditor land records land transfer books, deed, uh, deed records of lands, deed records of um, original entries, um, grantor grantee index, which is really, really great to search, especially when you're looking for someone who owned land, and then town lot deeds and records. So that's, that's a really great collection. Then we have even more Scott County records. And so this is kind of are miscellaneous ones that we don't have, that we have just the range that they come in for the year. So um, I'll just kind of list off a, a few different things. Coroner reports, historical case files, old age pension dockets, mothers and widows pension records, um, soldiers discharge records from World War I, court, district court case uh, files, property taxes, um, a bunch of other things. And that's where they're housed in special collections. And then we have some other ones, which include our law and equity case files, um, some more district court packets pre-1877. Um, so just a lot of different resources. Um, we do have the County Board of Supervisor minutes and city um, council proceedings. And so those are, we did a big grant in the mid nineties um, to digitize everybody's in Scott County and also the Board of Supervisors minutes. So we have those on microfilm, but we also do have for some of these Scott County records, we do have the originals, um, but we offer access through microfilm. Then as we go on, we have some we're expanding outside of our Scott County records, but we have church and cemetery records that we have in our collection. So for churches, we we do have some records that have been microfilmed from a variety of churches that include baptism records and marriage certificates. We also have books that talk about the histories of the local churches records and indices for their collections and where to find those. We also have a great collection regarding our local cemeteries. Um, we have histories, interment records, maps, and gravestone inscriptions. We had a lot of great dedicated volunteers who went and transcribed some of our local cemeteries information. So that was a really great resource for us. Then we have a great collection of newspapers. So we have newspapers dating back to 1838. Um, they're published at various times, so daily, weekly. Um, we have morning and evening editions of some of our newspapers. And they we had quite a few um, in the past. We had a number of newspapers and then we've been able to winnow it down to the Quad City Times over here on the Iowa side. Um, so they merged a couple last remaining newspapers. Uh, most of our papers are in English, but we do have some German language uh, newspapers that were published daily and weekly, and so you can access those. We do have other newspapers in our collection at the county, regional, and state level, and so we have Scott, the Scott County Tribune, the North Scott Press, 
Catholic messenger, um, the leader from Moline, uh, Muscatine, which is in the south of us. Clinton is in the north and Burlington is also a little bit further south than Muscatine. Um, and then some other local area um, outside Quad City proper, um, which is the DeWitt newspapers, Wheatland, Port Byron Globe. And we do have a really good collection of our um, more state newspaper, the Des Moines Register. And so these are some clippings of our examples from our Davenport newspapers that I wanted to share with you guys. I just really like the pie eating contest one. We have some pictures um, that are negatives of these folks eating pie. <laughs> it's really cute. Then we do have census um, records in our collection at the state and federal level. Um, so you guys all know probably about the federal census. Um, we do have access up to the 1950 census, so we're thrilled about that. Um, but for the state census, um, like many states, we did take a census and it was on the off years from the the regular census, the federal census, but 1925 Iowa State Census had a lot of questions that were very that are very helpful for genealogists because um, they ask questions about parents, names of everybody, marriages, and birthplaces. Um, we have access to our census records on microfilm um, through bound indices, and then also through genealogical databases like Ancestry Library Edition. Then we have um, a really great collection of military records. These include records that pertain to the Civil War, World War I, World War II, and Korea. Enlistment and discharge records for some of these wars, rosters and registrations, index to compiled war records, returns for the RIA and Camp McClellan. So the RIA is the Rock Island Arsenal, um, and that's a, a big resource here in the Quad Cities. GAR records, Roll of Honors, histories. Um, we had a, a gentleman who did a bunch of research, um, James J. Jacobson. He did a history of the rendezvous camps in Davenport during the Civil War. And that was really, it's a great resource for us. And then we also have oral histories um, that tell of people's service in the Quad Cities and beyond. And then we'll share a little bit about our local database search. And so this is a federated search that you can do across several index, uh, indexes that we've created. And so right now we have, with this search, we have, we search across 14 different indexes. So those include our local news index that we're continuing to add to. So that is access to news that is shared in our newspaper. Hostetler fo photos. So um, Hostetler Studios was a local studio in the early 1900s. And they, we have half of their collection. And so we um, offer a name index for that, an obituary search, Scott County marriage certificates and license return search, uh, marriage announcements in the newspaper, news from the Gazette newspaper that was published in Davenport, indexes to the 1856, 1885, and 1925 Iowa State Census. The, U.S. Veteran Reserve Corps, the 4th Regiment, and Company K, so those are some of our military indexes. Um, the Iowa Volunteer Civil War Enlistments List, Mortality Schedules, Scott County Probate, and then we have a catch-all, which is called our Scott County Unusual Sources. But we also have abstracted names from the newspapers and things like that. But we have some big news on this front. Um, this is still accessible in this form, but we are currently working on a new way to search these databases. And so I hope you guys stay tuned and for an announcement later this year. So it should be a really good change for us and we'll add a lot more content to this, this search. So we'll go on. We do have access to a lot of online databases um, that, I think most of them can be searched at home. 
and some of them without a library card. So that's a really great re thing to share with folks. Um, so we are pleased to provide several online subscription databases for patrons to use. Um, one that is in-house only is our Access Newspaper Archive. This is a resource that we have access outside of our area. Some of uh, are looking beyond this area too, but we only have access to Iowa newspapers. We do have Ancestry Library Edition version for our patrons, which is accessible in-house. And if you guys, well, if you're not in this region, um, you can come down to Special Collections and we have a dedicated genealogy computer. And so even if you don't have a library card, you can still access all these lovely databases um, through our computers or by signing into our Wi-Fi. We also have some databases that are accessible from home, Family Search. Um, we recommend that folks use that. And we also get to boast that we are Family Search affiliate library. So um, when you come in, you can sign up for Family Search and sign into that, but then you'll get some extra resources for you. We have Heritage Quest online, which you have, you'll have to sign in with a library card. Um, access to Quad City Times, um, a newspaper index from 2003 to, to, to present. And then um, in combination with that, we have America's newspapers that offer a little bit more uh, widely news uh, accessible newspapers. And then we have a link to our Scott County, Iowa Genealogical Society. Their website has a plethora of great resources for folks. And then also our Upper Mississippi Valley Digital Image Archive, which I'll talk about more later. So on to our local history resources. We have a lot in special collections. And even though it, we, I say that they're local history, it can be used for genealogical resource, research as well. So we have a great collection of local history books. The genres and topics included in this collection are histories, which are um, cover topics from architecture to nature and more. Um, we have works by local authors and works of local fiction that's not set in Iowa um, or is set in Iowa. We have a local cookbook collection uh, books related relating to music and arts, local government documents, lots of different things. We have uh, 22,000 volumes in our collection. And so all of these books actually can be searched on our library's catalog. And so you'll be able to search like I shared earlier to find these items. We also have like really unique fun histories like the histories of cigars in Davenport, Iowa, which is a recent publication that we're really thrilled to add to our collection. Then we are continuing with our local history books, but adding on periodicals. So we have a really great collection, almost complete collection of Davenport city directories from 1855 to present. These are one of our, this is one of our most well-used collections. We also contain some uh, Rock Island and Moline city directories as, as well on the other side of these um, city directories. Then we also have some county histories from 1882, 1910, and 1991. And so if you want to trace our fun history in Scott County, you can do that too. And then we also have a collection of the Annals of Iowa and the Palimpsest and other local state journals on the state of Iowa and our activities. And we can also, if you are interested, we can point, um, those have all been digitized and we can point um, you in the direction of those if you're interested. Then um, we do have a really good collection of school records and collections. These collections contain materials from various levels of education, including primary school, middle school, secondary, and then also post-secondary or tertiary school levels. Um, these school 
records include public and private institutions. Most of these come from our archive and manuscript collections, but we do actively co collect yearbooks and things like that. Um, so we have all of our high, the most of the, our Davenport High School yearbooks from when each of them started. We have alumni directories specifically, report cards, photographs, class photos, things like that, teacher association records, student workbooks and awards and programs from various activities at schools. And then some other examples of collections that fall out of the main parameters. We do have a collection of Fairmount Preschool from the Fairmount Preschool for the multi-handicapped that cover the years of 1960 to 1995. Um, retired Davenport Area Retired School Personnel Association collections and, from 1977 to 2004, and then just a lot more collections. We have a, a handout that covers all of our archives and manuscript collections that have to do with schools. Then jumping in to the thing that I was mentioning before, our archive and manuscript co collections. So we have uh, closed stacks that contain all of our, all these collections and it's a really, it's a fun um, place to visit if you go on a tour in our, in our facilities. Um, so the Richardson Sloan Special Collection Center collects uh, collections that specifically relate to Davenport and Scott County history. We, they are primarily organized as personal papers, records and collections. So local records from organizations and societies include social, political, fraternal societies and clubs, personal papers or individuals, genealogical papers or research that they've done and compiled, um, things that are about their life and their family, business records from a variety of places, we also have subject or individual co individuals collection. So it might not be on a specific topic, but it's things that they've gathered together to create a entire collection. These, this organization is primarily based on how they were created or received. And so we kind of just leave it up to the donor on how they're organized. And if they do need more organization or arrangement, we do so when we receive them. So some collections that fall under that category are our Davenport Women's Club papers, the American Auxiliary Davenport Numbers 26 collection, the Ladies Industrial Relief Society, we have the Hiber Hibernian Society and German Society papers and collections, we have a collection of the Davenport Daughters of Veterans of the Civil War collection, and all of these have finding aids in our archive and manuscript catalog. Um, some of them have a little bit more detailed records or container lists, but if you're interested in these collections, you can reach out to us and see what we have available for you. And um, then we also have a really great collection of Davenport City archives. And so we are designated as the archives for the Davenport, city of Davenport. Some of the city's historical records have been transferred to special collections to better provide, uh, pre preserve and provide access to these materials. Some major collections in the city records includes our parks minutes, um, our Davenport levy commission records, Davenport building permits dating back to 1923 to about 1970 and some of the and these have been microfilmed and are also available online through the city's website archive collections for which finding aids have been created below we have a number of different um, resources there um, so that's a picture of our archives in the back um, and we'll go into kind of what you can find in those collections so the different formats, we have correspondence, so postcards, letters, things like that, diaries and journals. We have business documents and receipts, um, postcards as in correspondence, but we also have a really great postcard collection for artifactual um, images of the area, um, photographs, uh, really wonderful 
collection of those writings and more. So lots of different fun things that you can find in our collection. I want to kind of highlight a couple collections that might be useful to a family historian. And so one is our 1989-01 Corbin Manuscript Collection. This focuses on um, Central and Western Massachusetts during the time period of eight, uh, 1650 to 1850. These contain uh, microfilmed files as well as this folder of correspondence that we have transcribed. So we have transcribed vital records, Bible records, and family histories for this in this collection. Then a couple other one archive and manuscript collections that I would like to highlight are our 2000-11. This is the ancient order of Hiberians meeting minutes. These are from 1897 to 1909. Um, these are photocopies of original ledger books, including minutes, uh, meeting minutes um, of the Davenport division. They include roll calls, members, addresses, and handwritten minutes of this group. So if your ancestor was a part of this organization, you could find out a little bit more about their activities and um, where they were at this time. And then we have a collection from the David Adams genealogical collection from 2013-23. This collection contains boxes of photo and archives relating to the following families, the Stafford, Souter, Morgan, Ward, and Adams families of Scott County. And Souter is a local name from uh, LeClaire, Iowa, and that's just a little bit to the north of us. And so we have a lot of great photos, a variety of formats, and lots of genealogical documentation for these families. So if you have anybody with those last names, you can check those out. And then we have our Mueller and Kohler family materials. These can, can uh, contain um, photographs, memorabilia, correspondence, and newspaper clippings relating to the Mueller and Kohler families. We have a bound book of photos from of the Kohler home on Brady and Locust Streets in Davenport. Um, we also have a file of staff genealogical research about the Mueller family. Um, so we also have done, we've tried to uh, include a lot of um, family research that we've done on our own for patrons requesting research or things that we've been interested in. So even if we might have a file on your family if um, we've been asked before. We also have the Don and Marietta Southwood collection. This contains books, professional genealogy work, um, personal genealogy for their families, and lots more. And then we have the Wasson, uh, Jennings, Mandel, and Bockenfield family history collections. This includes photocopies of genealogical family group sheets, obituaries, photos, marriage, and death certificates for these families. So if you want to, you can just call us or email us, or you can search our archive and manuscript catalog. And so you can use this to search our archive and manuscripts catalog, uh, collections by searching by keyword, title, creator, subject, notes, or identifier. That's the little number that I was saying beforehand, the 2003-4, things like that. You probably won't know those. So just use the keyword search and that will um, search across the whole finding aid. You can also, if you have interest, you can browse by collection, subject, or name. Um, so this is just available to anyone at archives.davenportlibrary.com. Then we have a really great photograph collection. So we have over 60,000 images of Davenport, Scott County, and Quad City area peoples and places. A lot of our non-portrait images date from approximately 1920 to 1960. A portion of the images have been photocopied and arranged by general subject and can be browsed in our, just in our collection. But we do have um, other indexes for them as well. So you can just come up to the desk and ask us. 
Um, we do have a really wonderfully large collection of portraitures from the Hostetler and Free Studios in Davenport. So it began as the Hostetler Studio up on Brady Street and then it was taken over by Mr. Free. There is a name index to most of these indexes or these images. Um, but we have digitized all of them in the collect in that collection, and we are continuously adding them to our Upper Mississippi Digital Image Archive. And so um, these are a few images from those collections. And then we have these two examples of photograph collections. Um, the one with the album and the little tin types is 2018-02. This is a Staub collection of family historical materials. They contain um, the surnames Brown and Wilson. And so you can see that you can see some ancestors in these images. And then to the other, in the other picture, it depicts the 2018-09, the Loris Council, um, 532 Knights of Columbus collection. And so this has a program from their convention in 1916, but it also has black and white prints of its members from 19, 19, 1915. So it's a really great collection that we organized alphabetically so you can search and see if your family members are in there. Then we have a really great photograph of our old settlers of Scott County. And so this has the names of each individual and around an early illustration of, of Scott County in Davenport. And so you can see the Mississippi River and all these lovely faces that made up our community back then. Then how you can search our digitized images, as I was hinting at before, is our Upper Mississippi Valley Digital Image Archive. It's a mouthful, but it's a really great resource. And the Special Collection Center participates in this with um, a number of other Quad City area libraries and historical collections and organizations. And so this is a spot where you can search our digitized items, but also Musser and Muscatines, Augustana Special Collections, Buffalo, and many more. So definitely check that out. And there's a link in the handout for that as well. And we, are, we always add to it more and more. And then we do have maps and architectural drawings in our collection. Um, we have some highlights from our collection, maps and plat, plat books, atlases. We do have several architectural um, collections. So from our Priester Construction Company and then the Temple and Burroughs Architectural for Firm. So we have um, a really great collection documenting the built environment in our community. And all all of our published maps are actually searchable in our library's catalog. And if you're interested in the ones that are non-published, you can come to the desk and we can help you search for those. Um, we're hoping to get those more accessible in the future. And then this is another image of our collection. So we have our Atlas stand um, with our Scott County um, at, uh, historical atlases combine atlases and things like that, which have lots of great um, genealogical benefits, um, a city township map, and then a plat map of our, a little section called Rockingham um, in West Davenport. We do have an ephemera collection, which contains um, memorabilia typically written or printed um, materials that were originally expected to have um, a short-term short use or popularity. So post, posters, ticket stubs, programs, calendars, business and political flyers and more. And this fun fan from a, a summer concert series in 2000. And so those are accessible in an in-house index for us to search. So you just have to keep coming back to us um, at the desk. And then we also have a collection of audiovisual materials and oral history collections. So these contain um, musical recordings, film and video recordings, oral history recordings, 
So oral histories can be on cassette tapes, as you see here, or they can be digital files. So um, if you're interested in searching those, we do have a record in our archive and manuscript collection, and all of these other recordings should be accessible through there as well. We did just recently complete a grant to digitize a collection of recordings related to Big Spiderbeck, and those are accessible in-house on the Upper Mississippi Digital Image Archive. Then we have our special collections blog. We publish weekly blog posts, but we also have much more content on there than just blogs. Um, we have resources like our um, genealogy class that we offer for beginners. So if you're interested in those, you can access that. Then I'll be covering a few of our services and tools. So we do offer reference um, services such as copies of records, so obituaries, probates, things like that. And we also offer in-depth research services. So for copies of records, we do charge $3 per record. Um, and you get up to five pages of that record um, included in the $3 fee. And um, we do charge for extra uh, pages, um, but you can certainly contact us and see what we have available for you. Um, with the in-depth research services, we provide a generous one hour of research for the $15. Um, but we'll, whatever you're willing to spend or have available, we'll work with you and get your answers, uh, your questions answered. Um, reproductions, we also uh, print, make copies for folks of our textual image and audiovisual materials that are owned by us. We do charge $10 for image reproductions. Um, specifically for like publications or additions to materials like that. Um, then we also offer services through programming and instruction like this program, um, but we also offer um, to local institutions that are interested in our collections and resources. We offer genealogical classes and events, local history lecture series. The QC Archives Fair is a big event that we hold annually, bringing everybody together and for history and cultural organizations. Opening the Box is our archive and manuscript um, program preservation workshop where we talk about different resources there, but we'll hop into some fun pictures of those events. And then we have lots more. We do a beginning genealogy course, um, six weeks, and that's a part of our main menu program series. We also do exhibits and displays. So we have book displays and exhibits and special collections, but we also um, just have expanded special collections to all the library branches. So each branch has a display with some materials from special collections. So um, everyone doesn't always make it down to Maine to see us, our main down, downtown branch. Um, so we wanted to bring special collections to them. We also invite traveling displays and exhibits to our space as well. And so the picture with multiple little pictures, that's from our archives fair in 2021. It was a really fun one. We had it at the Butterworth Center. Then some other tools that you could use for using our resources is our website. Um, this is a main go-to that we send folks to. Um, our website's really easy. It's davenportlibrary.com. And then you just click on the genealogy and history tab and you'll find lots of resources about us. And this link is in our handout. We also have a good collection of research guides on specific topics of interest as well as individuals or um, materials in our collection, like the Newcomb Loom collection. We have stuff on our founders, which is which are who are um, George Davenport and Antoine LeClaire. We have a live guide on Big Spiderback. One big collection that we have that you guys might be of interested in, of interest to you is our Annie Wittenmeyer um, home or the Iowa Soldiers Orphans Home, which was established around the time of the Civil War. And so 
that has resources on there. We do not have the records of the orphans who stayed at Annie Witt, but um, we can point you to the direction of who does. Um, so if you're interested in that, please contact us and we can help you. And this is all accessible at home, wherever you are. Then we also have some tools available to you. Um, if you come in down and visit us, uh, we have our kick scanner, which is an overhead scanner that you can save in multiple formats. You can scan flat items and then also bound items. It can turn into a V shape. We have two different types of microfilm readers, a digital and a manual microfilm reader um, that you can use for different purposes of if you want to scan and send it digitally or print out or just browse. And then we also have a digitization station in the back that we can help digitize our collections and provide access to a wider audience. Then um, we do have a donation process. Um, I won't go over these step by step, but just initial take in, we'll talk to you and see what you wanna donate, uh, processing, uh, making it accessible, organization, rehousing, per, um, preserving it, um, description of it, either catalog or finding aid, and then access. So then we can offer it for use and digitization. Um, so if you have any questions about that, or um, even if you're not donating to us and you just have questions about the process, to your local place, we would be happy to answer those questions. Then one of our greatest resources is our staff. So Amy, this is all of us. Um, we really love helping folks. So we would love to see you virtually or um, in person. Then I'll jump into a couple, two uh, Davenport Library resources. We are a federal depository library, so we are, uh, participate in this program from the federal government. We are a selective repository, so we don't have everything. Our regional is in Iowa City, which is just about an hour away. Um, we do have access. All these are um, available in our catalog, so if you're interested in what we have, you can search that. Um, you can also go to their website and see what they have online as well, and those links are um, links and guides, so those are in the handout. We are also a patent and trademark research center. Um, so for the, from the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you can access the, this uh, Iowa patent inventor search from our website, but um, lots of great resources there for you if you have ancestors that are creators. Then some Quad Cities resources that we have available. Um, just a quick overview of what the Quad Cities are, if you're not familiar. So we are a community that um, surrounds the Mississippi River, part of it. Um, and so we consist of the Rock of Rock Island in Moline, Illinois and Davenport and Bettendorf, Iowa. But we have um, a population of around close to half a million um, altogether. We are also made up of many other communities and cities around us that uh, kind of create the bigger Quad Cities, the greater Quad City region. And we have history dating back to 1830 and to the signing of the Black Hawk War Treaty. We also have a number of industries that might have brought your ancestor here, like John Deere, the Rock Island Arsenal, um, lots of industries. And so we'll be highlighting some organizations that may have additional genealogical resources, but also places to look because they might have brought your ancestor here. So we do have a family history center in Davenport. Um, they have a really great collection that focuses on Scott County, Rock Island, um, the Schleswig Holstein. Um, ethnic groups that came from that region, from Denmark and Germany, um, Sweden and various areas, and then other areas in the United States. They are located in western uh, the western side of Davenport, but we would be happy to point you there. We also have the Swenson Swedish Immigration Research Center and Augustana College. So both are located on the campus of Augustana College. 
um, in Rock Island, Illinois. They have, um, they're able to take visitors um, online and in person. Augustana's uh, specifically offers book and manuscript and photograph collections. And Swenson offers lots of fun stuff like Genealogy for Hire, a Swedish American genealogist, uh, periodical. Um, they offer trips to Salt Lake City um, and then also trips to Sweden and also help with translation work and things like that if you have Swedish documents. Um, we also have some other resources such as our uh, the Rock Island County Historical Society and also the Rock Island County, Illinois Genealogical Society. They're both located inside the same building um, in Moline, Illinois. And they offer really great websites, lots of great resources um, available from those two uh, organizations. And then also our counterpart in Rock Island, the Rock Island Public Library, which is located in, of course, Rock Island. Um, but they offer a really nice uh, facility of a, a special collections room. So they don't have a basement like we do, um, but they have lots of great resources and really willing staff to help with those, that, with those research questions. Then we also have Palmer College of Chiropractic and Special Collections Archives. So if your family members were chiropractors and they studied in um, Davenport, they probably went there um, because we were the site of the first chiropractic adjustment. Um, so that's pretty fun. Um, and then we also have St. Ambrose University. They have a special collections and archives. Lots of um, folks might have gone there. We also have the Rock Island Arsenal Museum. They have a number of records and resources to search the local area and beyond. We have the German American Heritage Center located in Davenport, and then the American Schleswig Holstein Heritage Society in Walcott, uh, Iowa, which is um, near the I-80, the world's largest truck stop, truck stop on I-80. And so um, you can go search there and um, see if you have anybody there. But we invite you to come visit us online or make a, a family history research trip to come see us in person, um, trying to tantalize and tempt you by our, our spaces. Um, but thank you so much. I'm happy to answer any questions if we have time. This is our contact information. It's also on the handout. Please sign up for our newsletters. You can get tons of information that way. It's on our website um, under programs and events, but thank you so much.